Greetings and salutations, everyone. You're listening to Mama Roo's Ancestral Musings. This is a podcast about all things blackness with an ancestral point of view. I hope everybody's been well since we last spoke. Um, In my previous episodes, I made mention of Maisha Worthington's really powerful article about hoodoo and hoodoo as a religion, and I didn't have it in front of me, so let me just say here that her website, where you can find that and other really powerful articles and essays, is available at Conjure X, I'm sorry, CognacXConjure.com, that's Cognac. X conjure all one word C O N no C O G N A C X C O N J U R E dot com. So check that out if you have not already and follow her on her social media if you are not at this time. Ah, uh, man, it's a beautiful morning here in my neck of the woods. I'm enjoying the morning out here in my backyard. And I just want to revisit uh, a topic that was recorded on a previous episode that I don't think is available any longer on the Spreaker queue. It may still be available on my website. On I'm sorry, on my YouTube channel. All right, so check that out there, Revolutionary Juju. I'm just going to speak on that again today a little bit. And... Um, We, you know, are in the aftermath of a couple of mass shootings, one that happened yesterday, one that happened again today, earlier, and, um, you know, this part of this is why I started the Worldwide Action Against Violence um, campaign, all right? And if you've never heard of that, those are weekly group rituals that take place at the same time, at the same date, no matter where you are in the world, you can participate. Saturdays, 9 o'clock Eastern, adjust the time to accommodate your time zone to 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern. I know for myself, that means 8 o'clock Central Time. And that's where people, whether they are working alone or with others, whether they are doing group rituals, prayers, meditations, chants, drumming, ceremonies, or just having a moment of silence, either alone or with others. This is a way that we can collectively harness our personal power, our connection to the divine, all right? However you express this and target it towards binding the forces of violence that manifest in so many ways, okay? They manifest as intra-community violence, okay? I'm in Chicago, I live in Inglewood, it it is known for shootings, okay? And it's police brutality. And oftentimes, the intra-community violence in my community is instigated by the police, Okay, those that we pay with our tax dollars to protect and serve us, which they do not really do. Okay, Um, a larger part of what's going on here is because of gentrification. All right. And it has been rather successful. Okay, lots of folks here that own homes and rent in this community are moving away out of fear. All right. They're fearing for their lives and they're moving away and they're walking away from value that they they can't even appreciate right now, all right? So there's this mass exodus out of Chicago. Well, that was the whole plan, okay? To um, manufacture violent conditions so that it will instill fear in the residents so that they will walk away from their homes, walk away from their property so that the gentrifiers can come like vultures and scoop them all up so they can reclaim these neighborhoods, all right? That is a form of violence. Poverty in and of itself is a form of violence. Okay, These weekly rituals cover them all, whether it be domestic violence in the home, child abuse, child neglect, animal welfare, murders against gays and trans people, 
um, sex trafficking of young women and children. Okay, Um, what's happening at the border, what's happening in Gaza, what's happening, you know, in different parts of Africa, um, all over where people, mainly people of color, are affected negatively. Okay, so I created this to be inclusive. This was um, an action inspired by Egbe Agun of Detroit a few years ago. They started a weekly ritual against white supremacy and police brutality more specifically, and it ruffled a lot of folks' feathers to the point where there were actual groups doing prayers to fight against those prayers, okay? (laughs) Because so many feathers are ruffled. But I think... um, Doing it this way is not likely to incite people to try to work against this work because the force of violence is an equal opportunity destroyer. You understand? And none of us, no matter who you are, where you are, you know, what you, you know, pray to, who you pray to, how you do it, okay? We can all get together on that accord and agreement and say something has to give. And instead of being reactionary, let's be preventative, all right? Let's try to get ahead of these things so that we can do something to diminish them with our spiritual power, all right? Our collective spiritual power. Because I'm a seer and I see things and what I saw was some really dark, heavy shit coming our way. Now, I don't want to get into details of what that is because I don't want people being too, you know, fucked up about it or nervous about it or or fixated on it. But just know this, the force of violence is what's pushing all of these things. It's what's pushing these mass shootings. It's what's pushing... um, the, you know, the Trump administration is what's pushing all of the crap that's going on. All right. And we can join forces and bind that some bitch, bind that beast. We can destroy it collectively. So if you feel so moved to do something, um, if you have a group, if you have a church, if you have a circle, if you have an Ile, if you have a pedestal, if you have a Mananzo, if you have you know, just you, yourself, in your own home or car, or wherever you are, at 8 o'clock Central every Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern every Saturday. Work your thing to binding the forces of violence, okay? Because I believe that we can do something. We can actually affect change if we really, truly desire to. Next, I want to make an announcement. I spoke on this on the last episode, but I want to push this a little bit more. And that is the Walking the Dekenga event that's happening here in Chicago. It is a collaboration between myself, Mamaru, and New Era Chicago, the community activism organization that I am a part of. Now, a couple of years ago, um, the board of the organization wanted to put together an ancestral celebration um, to honor our ancestors. And that never took off because we had so many other things that we had to put our attention towards. So it just kind of got shelved and put on the back burner. However, we can't keep doing that. We got to get this out. Okay. As much as I love talking about this topic, African, Black American spirituality and root working and conjure and hoodoo and all that. And you know, um, as much as I like, you know, talking about it on my speaker and posting about it on my social media, it is time to take it off the internet and put it out on the ground. Okay. Um, people are always coming to me about teaching them, teaching them, teaching them. And I don't really care for teaching things on this medium. You know, I give you enough foundational information with the hope that that will inspire you to dig a little deeper. But 
throwing out breadcrumbs is not going to get it for everybody. <laughs> you know, some people will get it. But the people that aren't too keen on getting it that way, you know, they need to see it to understand it. They need to feel it to really appreciate it. So that is why we are doing Walking the Dekanga 2019 here in Chicago, April, I'm sorry, April, August 23rd, which is a Saturday and August 24th, which is a Sunday. Man, it is going to be so powerful. Okay. The registration fee for this two-day two day event is $111.11. And it is payable through Cash App, dollar sign, Mama Roo. Um, the slots for attendance are limited. Okay, we can only accommodate so many people at this cost. So they are filling up. Okay, they are filling up. So if you're interested or would like more information, shoot me an email at contact at mamaroo.com. Okay, um, for people that are definitely attending, they have been added to a secret Facebook group um, where, you know, they can chat amongst themselves and ask questions and get more particulars about this event. All right. And day one, I'll just run through it very vaguely. Day one will involve uh, a spiritual cleansing and blessing. It'll involve a nature walk. I will be taking attendees through all my little special parts <laughs> around here where I am. You know, the places where I have personally built up um, relationships with spirits of divine forces in nature. And they will be welcomed. All right. That's already going to be established before that date. And they will be shown how to foster their own relationships with the spirits of the natural world. As a result of that experience, they will be collecting their own gifts from nature. And after that, we will go through demonstrations on how to construct spiritual objects and tools with the gifts that the forest gave to them. All right. And we'll just, you know have a really great time doing that we will break for lunch and then the talks will continue um, there will be some crafting going on uh, making blessing water all right utilizing the greenery that the forest blessed them with they will be creating their own blessing waters which will then be utilized for day two Day two of the program is all about the ancestors. There will be talks and discussions about the ancestors, how to get started with forging strong relationships with your ancestors, how to build an ancestral altar or shrine. Um, and then that's going to culminate in a personal dedication ceremony as well as an ancestral celebration. And afterwards, we're going to have a really wonderful feast. Everybody will be wearing all white for that part. And um, it's just going to be really beautiful and really, really powerful. And things like this are just so necessary all right now one thing i want to make clear is that attendees who are coming are not necessarily going to be learning about their own personal power and how to help themselves they will also be learning how to share these teachings with others and how to start and formulate their own groups their own houses their own circles if you will, okay, and basically put this out into their communities, all right, because our communities in this land have been without this type of thing for a long time, and it's time to get back to the healing, okay, and, you know, learning about tricks for money and love and binding and this and that is fine, but if our community is fucked up, then none of that really matters at the end of the day. We all need to get this good juju now, okay? We all 
need to reclaim ourselves and our ancestors. We need to tap into our power on an individual level and on a collective level. Because anti-blackness in this land is not going nowhere anytime soon. As a matter of fact, it's being emboldened and empowered as I speak. And we got to be prepared, y'all. And so now I'm going to sag into the revolutionary juju part. Revolutionary juju isn't for everyone. Okay? Everybody doesn't have the disposition of warrior. And that's okay. You know, that's okay. I myself am guilty of, you know, kind of thumping the the foreheads of folks that call themselves, you know, love and light um, specialists. Right? Um, uh what did they call them? light workers and you know i was on the opposite side of the spectrum so i'm looking at them like y'all ain't gonna change shit you know you need to be a little bit more fiery and a little bit more aggressive but i was wrong okay that was a mistake the ancestors have shown me over time that many hands make light work light work and with um you know the light workers, you know, the love and light people, they have their jobs and functions too, okay? Because once we're out there as warriors, you know, taking heads, we still need healing when we come back from the war, don't we? Yes, we need our battle wounds tended to. You understand me? So we need our love and light people on deck, because they have a specialized role. Basically, we need everyone. Okay? So, we need to stop us warrior heads. We need to stop bashing our peace, love, and light brothers and sisters. Because their part in this is just as important. Alright? So, revolutionary juju. Channeling your inner ancestral warrior okay now it's kind of easy to do when you have visible frames of reference and i know that the yoruba tradition is excellent for that because they have certain warrior orishas and not all of them are male well that makes sense because historically and culturally in africa women were also on the front lines they used to be whole ass groups of female militias and to this day they are still are and it's not even limited to africa y'all this is kind of like a people of color around the globe thing having women fighting on the front lines for their communities for their families for their villages and so on okay um So it's not just male energy that I'm talking about when I say warrior. The Western mindset, yes, they would like to, you know, peg it all the way to men and male energy. But we as human beings, we operate on both male and female divine energy, every single one of us. The Urugu way of doing things for men specifically is to strip away their feminine divine essence and totally focus on the masculine energy. Well, that creates a problem. It creates imbalance. You know, and a, you know this thing going around toxic masculinity, I know a lot of folks can't stand that phrase, but it's an important phrase because it is an example of what happens when there is an imbalance of the divine feminine okay that's what the result is you understand so we need to really take a step back and look at these things a little bit better all right we got to be able to see the forest for the trees and appreciate the nature of these things so in revolutionary juju um there were times that I was just really, really hardcore in my personal spiritual practices of dealing with the forces of evil, a.k.a. the forces of violence, a.k.a. the beast, all right, um, doing things on my own. And I was getting good results, but I couldn't help but wonder how much better these results could be if it wasn't just me, you know, <laughs> So I put a call out 
you know, when I made that podcast episode, Revolutionary Juju, and I had some good feedback from individuals who wanted more, you know, information on how to get started um, with that. And I shared the information with them and that, you know, let them go on and do their things. And uh, but we need more of you. We need more of you. And it's, again, this isn't just for our our warriors and our fighters. This isn't just for those of us who don't mind getting bloody and who don't mind getting dirty and who don't mind uh, marching into the shadows right into the mouth of the beast. Okay, everybody isn't cut out for that. Okay, and that takes nothing away from you if you aren't cut out for that. All right. And but me and my being myopic about it, I'm thinking everybody's cut out for it. Everybody needs to put those damn crystals down, shut their mouths about these goddamn chakras and get down with the machete, damn it. (laughs) But I, you know, mm -mm. I mean, yeah, we can still do that, but it's not for everybody. Everything ain't for everybody. And it's okay. Okay, now, for those of us who think ourselves to be warriors, you know, you got to keep your protections up. Yes, you do. You got to be covered with the blessings and the protections of your ancestral crew. Your goons is who you calling up to stand with you. Okay, that's a play on words for a goon, which means ancestor in the Yoruba language. Um. But you got to get that covering. You got to get your shields and your armors in place before you call yourself marching out into onto the front lines, marching out onto the field. Okay, and it might take a little time and that's fine because what's happening now has been happening. All right. It's been happening. So take your time. Don't rush into this because yeah, you can become a casualty of sorts if you're not fully protected nor are fully trained. All right. So what does that training involve exactly? Well, I'll put it to you like this. In order to defeat your enemy, you must know your enemy. You cannot expect any victory over the enemy you are fighting if you don't know who they are if you don't know how to recognize them if you don't know how they think okay how do you stay two three four five steps ahead of your enemy if you don't know how they make their steps all right you've got to study your enemy thoroughly and completely all right that's one way And just surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals isn't going to get it, (laughs) right? It's not going to get it, all right? We live in a a society that's dominated by the enemy. They're everywhere. Just pay attention, all right? Study them and assess the information that you are receiving and then move accordingly, okay? So... That's basically how to get started with this. All right. Now, the works, as far as what they are and what they involve, you you know, if you know anything about me, you you know, I don't put those dirty details on social media and I will not be speaking about them here because there are certain dangers involved with being explicit about what we do in this particular vein of work. Okay, for many, many reasons. All right. Um, Some things must be kept secret. Some things must be kept sacred. And that must be respected by all. But for those of you who know, then I'm thankful. Okay. And I wish you much, much power on your juju, on your revolutionary juju practice. Okay, Um, for the the majority of us, it's basically a mindset. All right. It's getting into the proper mindset of things. All right. And again, even that is something that isn't for everybody. And it's no it's so, you know, you don't have to get frustrated. Okay, Um, when I do 
pushes for a worldwide action against violence, for example, I feel like you know not enough people are in on this, not enough people are jumping on it, not enough people are doing it, and it could make me sad, it could make me frustrated, but i I refuse to be you know why because there was a time that I felt like you know, just a handful of us were honoring our ancestors. Just a handful of us saw the connection between our magical practices and our spiritual traditions. But look at time. Time has proven me wrong. Okay? So it would be foolishness for me to sit back and whine and complain and commiserate and, you know, feel badly that this thing, this campaign hasn't taken off with a bang like I want it to. It's all in time, all right? Unfortunately, it takes tragedies to wake people up. When you try to mobilize people to do things to prevent shit from happening, it doesn't resonate with them because it's not on their view. It didn't happen in their family. It didn't happen in their community. It didn't happen in their city. It didn't happen to them. So they don't, they can't relate and they just... It doesn't vibe with them at all. It's usually after some sort of tragedy has taken place that people feel, you know, fired up and they feel motivated to be a solution to the problem. Okay? But at that point, it's kind of too late, right? So people get riled up. You know, I'm seeing all this stuff on social media where people are making comparisons between, you know, how the shooter in El Paso yesterday was apprehended alive right white man of course apprehended alive after killing 19 or 20 individuals and wounding 40 to 50 he was apprehended alive but john crawford was in walmart looking at a bb gun an air rifle and he was shot dead on the scene tamir rice was in the park playing with his bb gun and was executed by white police officers within two seconds of them arriving on the scene but we have these white men going to public places churches walmarts malls um entertainment events and so on nightclubs and so on all right, spraying bullets indiscriminately in a lot of cases. And, um, you know, they are usually apprehended alive and will live to see their day in court. So, I'm, you know, I can't even push that anymore. Been there, done that, seen that. You know what I mean? It's just going to keep happening over and over and over. It's just going to keep happening unless we take a stand to do something. All right. If you're not willing to arm up and stand with a community activist organization and, you know, that specifically um, focuses on, you know, shooting back. (laughs) Okay. If that's not you. You know, if you'd rather protest, if you'd rather peacefully protest, if you'd rather, you know, spread awareness uh, on social media or, you know, write think pieces and all like that, then do it. You know, I'd rather you do that than do nothing at all. All right. But if you feel spiritually inclined to do something, please, I welcome you. I receive you. Please join the campaign Worldwide Action Against Violence. Please start up your own revolutionary juju rituals and practices um, because we have the power to change this situation. We have to know that and we have to trust it. Having faith is fine, but knowing something is true is different. It's more powerful to me. And it, again, you know, this work isn't easy. <laughs> okay. It is not easy at all. All right. You got to be cut from a special kind of cloth to do this here kind of work. So for those of you who got the minerals, who got the moxie, who have the spiritual strength as well as the mental and emotional and psychological strength to do this here work, okay? I cover you 
with all the might, power, strength, and resolve, and blessings and protections of our mighty great ancestors. May they never leave your side. I claim that to be so. Okay? Yes. And um, one more point I'd like to make note of. Um, I still rock with Black Power Race First. Okay? Because that's who I am. That's the community that I live in. That's my family. All right? But when it comes to fighting the forces of violence... My focus always stays, you know, with my immediate situation. All right. But we got to think a little bit bigger than that, because the force behind the bullshit that is happening here in my backyard, it belongs to the same force that fuels the bullshit that manifests in so many other oppressive ways. All right. I know what kind of world I want my children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren, and so on, to live in. And I would feel like, you know, I have all this access to power, but I didn't push it toward making a better world for my descendants. What kind of ancestor would I be? Okay, I think I get a lot of that from my father. Okay, when he was a young man in India, he fought to um, do away with child marriage and the caste system over there, all right? He wanted to make changes for his entire country, not just his small village in Orisha. Uh, I'm sorry, Odisha or Orisa in southern central India. He, he did it for the, wealth, for the benefit and well-being of a larger group of people. So it's in my blood, okay? It's in my blood to have the desire to do this. So... I'm not doing this to create a name for myself. My ego has nothing to do with any of this. Okay. I have an ego. Yes, I do. But I nourish it and nurture it in other ways. And those things are private. Okay. (laughs) But when it comes to doing things publicly, um, it's not about me. And I see a lot of young folks out here just making everything about them. Okay. Just making everything about them. And we, we can't do that. All right, that's just not African. It really isn't. You know, it takes a village. Okay, our ancestors didn't come up with that saying for a reason. It takes a village to save a child or to teach a child or to nourish a child. They didn't say that for nothing. Okay, we got to get back to the collective part of who we are. We got to get back to the community part of who we are. And building communities isn't about an individual's ego, not at all, okay? I'm just here to give you direction. I'm just here to point out the signposts along the path. And you take these things and you cultivate them on your own, okay? You add to the things that I'm sharing with you, okay? This isn't me making a rigid set of rules that everybody must follow to the letter. Mm -mm. No, we're not a monolithic group. So why would I even approach this like that? Right. But many hands make light work. And together with our community building, um, together with our reaching out to one another, together with our um, just making collective spiritual practice of a regular thing. And there's no telling what we can do to change our present, but at a bigger way, the future. Okay, we might not be able to live long enough to really see the benefits of the seeds that we are planting right here and right now. But plant those seeds, we must. We must do that. Okay, our ancestors in the past worked hard until death. To create a better world for us. Okay. They didn't live long enough to see it manifest in their lifetime. Okay. But it manifested over time after their lifetime. And we have to start looking at things from that perspective and be okay with it. We just don't say, oh, forget it. It's never going to work. It's never going to change anything. That's not going to do anything. 
Okay, when you plant a tree seed into the soil, do you come back two weeks later and motherfuck it because you don't see no movement yet? No, because you kind of know it takes time for a tree to turn into a, a seedling and then a sapling and then a young tree and then a mature tree. And you might not live long enough to see this tree go grow to 30 feet, but you have it in your mind that you know it will. Okay, and it's the same thing with our revolution, y'all. Start planting those seeds so that our descendants can reap the fruit from those trees. All right, so that's all I have for you today. Mama Rue's going to love you and leave you. But as always, I'm wishing you love, peace, and powerful Jew, Jew. All right. Take care, everybody.